Hi everybody, welcome back. Uh, thanks for joining me for this one. This is a preview video for the forthcoming build of Flyhawks HMS Ajax 1939. This is the uh, deluxe version of the kit. Flyhawk generally produce uh, two versions of most of their kits, uh, one with and one without uh, extra parts including brass barrels other brass parts and photo etch as well. So I've got the deluxe version with all those in. This one's also got one or two pieces of 3D printed parts as well. But I'm also going to be adding some uh, MicroMaster 3D printed parts. They've just arrived uh, today from New Zealand so I'm going to have a look at those in this video with you and compare them with the kit parts just to show you how much better the uh, 3D printed parts are over the kit parts. Uh, that's not to say that the kit parts are poor. For injection moulding, Flyhawk do a really good job of their uh, mouldings. But you'll be able to judge for yourself whether or not you think it's worth adding those details. Now throughout this build I'll be referring to this ship as HMS Ajax rather than what is probably the correct pronunciation, which is Ajax. Uh, but uh, ever since childhood, when I was reading books about the Battle of the River Plate, I've always referred to this ship as Ajax. So uh, the habit of 50 or 60 years is hard to break. Hopefully you'll forgive that inaccuracy if it is one. So we'll have a look at the kit parts first of all. I'll just give a quick overview of those and take a look at the photo etch set. And bearing in mind that I'm used to working in 1-200 scale, this is quite a difference. So let's open the box and take a look. First thing we come across is a card which shows us the uh, box artwork in a slightly larger format. I suppose that could be framed if you were so inclined. Now Flyhawk's instructions come in two parts in this particular version. We've got the uh, instructions which really show the assembly of the plastic parts on a double sided sheet like that together with a colour call out and uh, Flyhawk refer to Mr Hobby, Tamiya and the colour coach ranges for the colour callouts. In addition, in this particular version, you get a separate instruction sheet, which shows you, we're including some photographs of how the photo etch goes together. So uh, what you really need to be doing with a build like this is to combine the uh, plastic instructions, if you like, with the photo etch. Uh, and work out at what point you need to be doing the photo etch work in the basic assembly. Uh, but all that is for the build stages when we uh, actually get down to putting this kit together. So Flyhawk protect the hull part, the main hull, with that foam sheet. Uh, which is good because there's some very fine detail on this hull, including integral fair leads moulded along the side of the hull. And they're pretty delicate, so they could easily get broken in transit. The detailing on the hull looks okay to me. Uh, it's probably slightly over scale uh, if you measured it, but uh, under a coat of paint I'm sure that'll look fine. And the standard of moulding is really uh, exceptional because we've got, and I'll try and get some close-up photographs of this, uh, moulded in rig holes over the top of the portholes there along the side of the hull. Obviously this is moulded as a potential waterline model and if you wanted to do that, Flyhawk give us a separate waterline base, which is that part and also a weight to add into this space here. That just gives a little bit of bulk to the model if uh, you're displaying it without any sort of base uh, seascape or something like that. We're also given, just shift that out of the way, we're also given a full hull version. It's 
So we've got the lower part of the hull. And just a quick test fit shows that that's going to go together really cleanly. It should be possible to get a really smooth, uh, clean joint of that upper and lower hull if that's the way you're going to build it. I think I'm going to step out and uh, do a waterline version on a seascape, which I've never done before, so uh, it'll be interesting to see if I can pull that off. The decks are fairly finely planked. I think it's probably going to be slightly over scale if you really wanted to get down to measure in it, but I'm sure under a coat of paint and uh, a light wash that'll come out fairly nicely. The deck's moulded with a brake. So we've got a brake to the foxhole here and a separate part. And in this particular version of this Leander class cruiser we've got this deck section here which extends the uh, sides of the ship aft. So take a look at the rest of the superstructure parts now and these are all uh, provided separately uh, in bags in the kit. Just come in a bit on those and you can see that these main components are all slide moulded. So we've got the uh, upper detail with the decks moulded in there and the skylights and so on. But we also have the uh, watertight doors and the uh, windows along the side of the bulkheads and around the back of the bulkheads as well. So slide moulding has been used to do that which is good on a kit of this scale. Same with this forward superstructure as well which just goes forward of the bridge and with uh, B turrets barbette there. The fit of these superstructure parts is really clean so uh, I think what I'll be doing is assembling the superstructure decks separately and then just gluing them onto the main decks uh, but we'll give that some thought later on in the build. The rest of the superstructure parts follow the same pattern so we've got slide moulded parts here for the bridge superstructure. This superstructure element here has got integral uh, boat crutches for one of the boats, I don't know which one. And you can see that on the forward bulkhead of the bridge we've got some very fine mouldings for the uh, reels. Now in the deluxe version, which this one is, we also get some photo etch to replace those reels as well. The slide moulding technology continues here with the funnel, uh, which is good because a two-part assembly of the funnel would mean that you'd end up with a seam uh, forward and aft, uh, which would need clean-up and you'd, you'd probably lose a lot of the moulded in detail, the rivet detail on the skin of the funnel. In this kit we get a separate funnel cap as well so that should look really nice. Moving on to the uh, sprues. Now I'm not going to go over these in detail in this video but I will leave some photographs of them, some close-ups so you can just get a sense of the finesse of the moulding in these kits which is really high. And some of these parts are absolutely tiny. They're probably some of the finest uh, injection moulding parts I've ever seen on a kit. So I'll just put those to one side and I will get those photographs for the end of the video. Just have a look at the sprues for the ship's boats and floats. So the Carly floats come in uh, four different sizes I think there are on this. Although from a quick look through the instructions... I can only see the need for two sizes of them. Uh, but again, they're nicely moulded. I've got some 3D uh, replacements for these, so we'll compare those sprues with the 3Ds in a moment. The uh, ship's boats have the gigs and whalers on this sprue, and the launches and motorboats come with separate hulls and the cabins are moulded separately as well. So that might just ease painting if that's the way that you want to put the model together. I think if I was using the plastic parts for the boats I'd just assemble the whole thing and try to do some detail painting of them afterwards. 
These are the four inch ready use lockers and again I've got some 3D prints to replace those. Now the rest of the sprues are I think fairly common to Flyhawk in that they provide generic parts such as these paravanes and winches uh, so that they can just drop the sprue into a number of different kit packaging. So on this one we've got the uh, four inch mountings or at least the bases for them and the barrels and we've got a couple of uh, quad Vickers machine gun units there as well. This sprue contains the uh, searchlights and the smaller signalling lamps on them. Again they're really nicely detailed it's hard to see how 3D could improve too much on those and this sprue carries uh, some of the rangefinders and I think those look like binocular sets as well. Again absolutely tiny mouldings on those, they're very very fine no flash at all on them and the connection points with the sprues uh, are pretty fine as well so hopefully you should be able to clip those off and uh, they should go straight on the model. The uh, bag here contains the four main six inch turrets and also the uh, shields for the four inch mountings as well which are separate. I won't take those out otherwise I might lose them. We get two sprues here for uh, the aircraft which I think are fairy foxes. I think that's what they were and I've not uh, ever come across one of these before actually. I'm used to uh, fitting walrus aircraft on my Royal Navy subjects uh, so that's something a little bit different. You get two, I'm not quite sure why Flyhawk provide two of those and again there's some photo etch uh, to add to these in this particular version of the kit for the bracing wires and the float struts as well. Uh, the last main components that we get in the kit are these. I'm not going to take them out of the bags but we've got the turned brass parts so these are the six inch barrels and various pieces of turned brass for the masts these are the four inch barrels, which are very, very fine. So these are the uh, mast elements. And this last bag contains some 3D printed parts for some staffs and one or two other bits and pieces. The last thing to have a quick look at are these two frets of photo etch, which we get in the kit. And as I mentioned, uh, there's things like the reels to replace the moulded on parts on the kit. The main crane on the ship, the plastic parts are replaced with this very fine photo etch crane. There's quite a lot of these lattice frameworks which go along the sides of the decks and the hull. Some of them support the ship's boats and they've got photo etched cradles in them as well. Got some inclined ladders and the funnel grill here. This fret here contains the ship's railings and a couple of strips of ladders, a platform here. These parts are all for the seaplanes. So we've got the interplane struts and bracing and this part here and this part here are for the floats, the float supports. The frets also got this which is the catapult framework which is obviously a big improvement on the limitations of injection moulding so hopefully they'll add an awful lot to the model. So two uh, small frets of photo etch. Uh, unlike I think in the Bismarck I had something like 15 frets which were four times the size of this. So obviously a lot fewer photo etch parts to work with than I'm perhaps used to. Uh, but by the same token a lot of these parts are a lot finer and a lot smaller than uh, the photo etch that I've used on my 200 scale builds. We also get a small decal sheet for the ensigns 
and the markings for the uh, fairy aircraft here, roundels and fin flashes. So what I want to do now is take a look at the MicroMaster 3D parts. These have just arrived with me today and I've not had a chance to look at them yet. So when you order from MicroMaster this is how the parts generally arrive in these little cardboard uh, containers. Because if you've never seen these uh, parts before, uh, they are very, very fragile and you've got to be extremely careful with them. So I'll just take a look at each one of these in turn. I've actually forgotten what I ordered now. So these are uh, replacements for the quad Vickers mountings that I showed you on the plastic sprue a moment ago. And again it'll be easier for me to get some close-up photographs of these. So I'll just put the plastic sprue next to the 3D part so you can uh, take the time to compare the difference between the two. Now obviously these have got the usual stands for the 3D printing method underneath them. So these parts are going to need some very careful removal. And looking at them, I think I'm going to need some sort of optivizer or uh, extra magnification glasses to work with some of these parts. They're absolutely tiny. These are a couple of the uh, launches on this ship. I think we just need one for this particular kit. And you can see here we've got some separate very finely printed cabins or at least covers uh, for the various positions on the boat. There are also some separate crutches for the boats. I think when I looked at the kit, I worked out that I needed two sizes of Carly floats for this particular model. As you can see, I'm going to have lots of spares. I think we only need four or five, something like that, for this particular kit. These are the uh, quad torpedo tubes in 3D. And MicroMaster actually do a number of uh, torpedo tube sets, but these are peculiar to the Leander class. And they are different in that the marked starboard and port uh, on the base of the casting there, or the base of the print. These are the uh, six inch main turrets uh, with separately printed uh, barrels. These are the replacements for the 4-inch ready-use lockers and they come in two different styles, a smaller one here. Actually there are three different types on this particular print. And I think we need at least two of them for this particular model. These are uh, depth charge racks. I think there were six charge. And uh, Ajax carried one of these on the quarter deck. So again, I'm going to have some spares there. Here we've got the uh, four inch mountains of which uh, Ajax carried all four of these. So we'll be using them all. Now these are quite a bit better than the kit versions because they carry all the shell loading apparatus on the back of the platform and the uh, shield supports inside as well. So they're a big improvement. Some more boats. Again, I think I'll just be using one of these. These are a fast motorboat. I think the 26 foot, something like that, might be wrong. 
And again, we've got the separate cradles for those. This last set here contains the uh, range finders which go up on the bridge. There's one either side. And again, these are a lot more detailed than the kit parts. They contain the seats and sighting equipment on them as well. Actually, I've been given two sets of these because it looks like one of the bases is cracked and I think for safety MicroMaster has sent me a spare. So uh, that's good customer service I think. So uh, that's 14 different sets of 3D printed parts. So uh, just to finish the video off I'll take some uh, close-up photographs of the plastic parts from the Flyhawk kit and where I can I'll compare them with the MicroMaster equivalents and you can judge for yourselves whether or not it's worth uh, using them. I think most of them definitely are and it'll be interesting to see how they come together on the model when we get to build it. Before then I've just got uh, a last couple of bits and pieces to do on my 200 scale Bismarck so I'll have the luxury of working on a 200 scale kit before I go down to uh, these microscopic 700 scale pieces. So if you want to see the Ajax coming together, uh, if you want to subscribe to the channel if you're not already, and switch your notifications on and, and you'll get to know then when the first episode of the new build series comes out. So I hope you'll join me for that one everybody. In the meantime, look after yourselves, enjoy your modelling and uh, I'll see you soon. Bye for now.